In today's video, I want to go over some unfortunate drama between Frog Wars' games delisted due to an alleged dispute with the publisher Focus Home Interactive. We'll talk all about that, but that begs some bad news for people wanting to buy those games. Even though they're not the most notable games in the world, it's still some unfortunate news, and we'll go over that. Pre-orders for the decorative Death Stranding PlayStation 4 Pro are now live on Amazon, so jump on that as soon as possible if you're interested. The PlayStation Hits lineup is expanding this fall, so these are games that are priced at $19.99 and one major game is hitting that lineup, meaning that you're gonna be able to get it really, really cheap, and some Call of Duty Modern Warfare details have come out. The Spec Ops Survival Mode will be PS4 exclusive for a year. Not really a big fan of this news. We'll talk that at the end of this video, but first up, let's talk all about these games being delisted from the PlayStation Store. Very unfortunate news. Earlier today, Frogware announced that some of its titles have been removed from Microsoft and Sony's digital stores, while Frogware has recently released the Lovecraftian Sinking City, the studio is best known for its Sherlock Holmes games, specifically Sherlock Holmes Nemesis. According to the announcement, games such as The Testament of Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes vs. The Jack the Ripper, and Mag Runner Dark Pulse are no longer available on Xbox and PlayStation storefronts. Moreover, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment will be delisted come September 29th. These delistings only apply to the 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of the game, as the games are still available through Steam. Frogware states that the titles were delisted because Focus Home Interactive, the publisher behind the game that was in charge of commercializing these games on the 360 and PlayStation 3, refused to transfer the title IDs to us, the creators and IP owners of those titles, even though our publishing and distribution agreement has expired. Frogware noted that they're in the process of setting up new store profiles, and we are contacting console stores to relist the titles. A similar situation occurred last year when the Call of Juarez franchise was temporarily removed from digital storefronts. The delisting lasted until Ubisoft handed over publishing rights to the series developer Techland, so given that precedent, Frogwares probably can reappear on consoles, but this is just unfortunate news. I don't want this to become a reoccurring thing in gaming because as we're moving more and more into digital gaming, this is going to be a little bit of an issue. We've seen games like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Transformers Devastation, some quality titles titles be removed from digital storefronts, and once these games are removed digitally, it's sometimes pretty hard for them to come back. I mean, we've seen cases where the games have returned, but that's not necessarily going to happen with every game, and if it's a digital exclusive game, once they're gone, they are gone. If you have the game in your library, suddenly your account just got a lot more valuable because those games are no longer able to be bought on the PlayStation Store. Nonetheless, hopefully Frogwares gets this dispute remedied, and everything goes back to normal because I don't want to see more of their games removed that would be really unfortunate, but let's hope for the best. Because Crime and Punishment is actually also a PlayStation 4 title, so removing that would be a little bit of a bummer. Alright, moving on from that, pre-orders for the Dead Stranding PlayStation 4 Pro are live right now on Amazon. We talked about the console a little while ago, however, this is something that you'll want to pick up as soon as possible because generally speaking, these PlayStation 4 Pro consoles do sell out very quickly. The Marvel Spider-Man console is now going for a hefty price when the God of War console, which I personally do own, and it's a very slick console, well that console is also decently expensive, and this Dead Stranding console, given its slick design, given that it is a Hideo Kojima game, and given that you do have a slick controller to go with it, I imagine that this is gonna be pretty expensive out of the gate as well. Now the only issue is you really have to assess whether or not you do want to drop your $400 on a Dead Stranding PlayStation 4 Pro console, given that the PlayStation 5 is definitely gonna be released later next year, you really want to drop your $400 on a PS4 Pro now, when you can put that money towards the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation PlayStation 5 is gonna be backwards compatible, and I imagine the PlayStation 4 games running on the PlayStation 5, at the very least, they're gonna have PlayStation 4 Pro performance, so I don't really know if this is a logical buy right now, unless you are a gigantic, gigantic Hideo Kojima fan, or you really like the look of the console, or you really want a PS4 Pro for the next year for whatever reason, maybe you really want to play The Last of Us Part 2 right away the way it's intended to be played, maybe you want to play Death Stranding at the PS4 Pro settings, whatever the case may be, you can pick up the console right now and it's available for $400. All right, moving on from that, here's something I am very excited about. The PlayStation Hits lineup is expanding this fall. Now, if you're unaware of what the Hits lineup is, it's essentially the greatest Hits games where these are games that are going to be priced at $19.99 and if they do go on sale, they're going to go on sale for even cheaper. Now, generally speaking, when PlayStation Hits titles go on sale, they don't see as deep of a discount because they're already down to $19.99. I point to a game like Horizon Zordon Complete Edition. That game is a part of the Hits 
lineup. However, when it goes on sale, the most you're gonna see is like a 40% discount, and usually it's only a 25% off discount. So don't be expecting, you know, 75% off discounts on these games to get them super, super cheap. But when discounts do run, they make the deals even better. So some of the games being added, you've got Far Cry 4 in there, Gran Turismo Sport, Rayman Legends, The Crew, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Watch Dogs. However, superseding all of those games is, yes, the addition of God of War. God of War's base price is going down to $19.99, and that is awesome. $19.99 for God of War is already a fantastic deal. The game doesn't go on sale for $20 all too often, but now as a hits title, it is going to be $20 everywhere you look. And also, that means that come Black Friday, I do imagine that this is a game that's going to see somewhat of a discount, maybe not down to $9.99, but $14.99? Absolutely so. For whatever reason, if you've yet to check out God of War, now would be the time to do so, as the game is going to be super, super cheap. And these games are all going to be hitting the PlayStation Hits catalog come October 4th, so very soon you're going to be able to get God of War for just $19.99. And on top of that, GT Sport for $19.99 isn't bad. The other games, I don't really know what to make of them. Rayman Legends, The Crew, Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, that's okay for $20. Watch Dogs and Far Cry 4, those games should regularly be $20 anyway. And these titles do join over 40 iconic PS4 games and recent additions to the PlayStation Hits lineup, such as Friday the 13th, God of War 3 Remastered, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition, Neo, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. The PlayStation Hits range is touted to be a great way to catch up on epic PS4 games through the PlayStation Store and select retailers across the country. Now, I do want to note that if you're buying these games physically, they do have that very tacky and, in my opinion, disgusting PlayStation Hits little label on it, so that's a little bit of a bummer, but if you are more of a guy that just cares about getting the game, or you're going the download route, obviously, that's no issue at all. But $19.99 for God of War in particular is a great buy. And lastly, I do want to go over the news about Call of Duty Modern Warfare that is really making the rounds right now. Activision posted a trailer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare's campaign as a part of State of Play. However, the news that most people gravitated towards was the fact that Special Ops, the survival mode, is going to be playable first on PlayStation 4. Now, we did know that the PlayStation 4 was going to have exclusive Call of Duty content. Call of Duty and PlayStation have been in bed together for a little bit. However, you would think that it would be, okay, maybe two weeks, maybe a month. That would be a decent exclusivity period. However, in the case of Special Ops Survival Mode, it is an entire year of exclusivity. That is a significant portion of a game being stripped away from other platforms and being put exclusively on the PlayStation 4. Maybe you're of the mindset that, hey, this is good for PS4 gamers. It entices people to buy the game on PS4, but the game has cross-platform play. So why are you doing something that inherently segments the game from other platforms. I think that's just really dumb, and it would be one thing if it was one month exclusivity, even two months, but an entire year, the exclusivity is ending on October 1st, 2020, meaning that by the time this exclusivity period ends, so that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Modern Warfare is dropping October 25th. I don't want this to be a regularity in gaming, especially because what this can mean for the future. You can be of the mindset that, oh, it's just the special ops survival mode. It's not a big deal. It's not that significant. Again. However, if we let this slide, it's going to open the door for more and more content to be locked away in these exclusivity agreements. Do you want in one world where an RPG is released and a significant quest line is limited to a single platform and then the other platforms are still paying a full $60? It's one thing when a publisher is ground up funding the development of an exclusive because now you are funding the development of this game. In the case of Sony, they're just throwing money at Activision and now they're getting this special mode exclusive to their platform for a year. It's a completely different scenario. Scenario. I don't like it when it happened with Rise of the Tomb Raider and it had a one-year exclusivity period and that was for the entire game and I definitely don't like it here because you're still selling the game to the other platform owners for $60 a pop and that is just inexcusable. Again, it would be one thing if they decided to sell the game for say $49.99 on other platforms, but that is obviously not the case. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, Frogwares is going through some drama with Focus Home Interactive. Their games are being delisted from the PlayStation Store. Hopefully that gets remedied as soon as possible. Pre-orders for the PlayStation 4 Pro, 1 terabyte limited edition Dead Stranding console are live right now. PlayStation Hits is getting an update with God of War being the highlight, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare has Spec Ops Survival Mode exclusive to PS4 for a year. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.